Most times it's a lot easier to not do something like exercising, paying your taxes or staying woke. But when it comes to playing without a pick, it can actually be a lot more difficult to make your guitar sound decent at all. So we're gonna go over some of what I think are the proper techniques of playing without a pick if you're just using your hands and how it kind of stacks up with maybe some of the sounds that you'll get with one playing with a pick, okay? Now for the most part, we're gonna kind of bypass any kind of like Latin rhythms that use like fingernails. So this is just kind of assuming you have generally cut fingernails on your strumming hand and kind of what we can do. So basically, what we're gonna start off with is just sound of strumming E major chord with a pick, all right? So with a pick. With just your thumb. And then maybe incorporating some other principles. Okay, so a couple things that you notice right away is the attack of a pick might sound best to a lot of people. Again, a lot of this is, you know, just an opinion. But if you're anything like me, my number one skill in the world is losing picks. My number two skill in the world, thus, is playing without a pick, okay? So you might want to use this to kind of your advantage and maybe getting different tones from your strumming, et cetera, et cetera, all right? So when I say the attack of a pick, you can kind of hear the tonality of the, sh the sharpness of how this pick is actually hitting the strings. Okay, and you have a little bit more of an advantage in how you want to dynamically strike the strings. You can maybe hit an open chord and then get the root note. If you're just using your thumb, there's less of a dynamic, but that doesn't mean you still can't play with good dynamic technique. So for a lot of these examples, we're gonna be using one of my own original acoustic songs, Buried, which I'm gonna link you to in the description if you wanna check it out. But we're gonna talk about using your fingernails and the flesh of your fingers and thumb to kind of simulate the dynamics that you can get with the pick, all right? So again, if we're just taking this E major chord, if we wanna just use our thumb, the, the problem is when you go down, it can sound good. Again, a little more mid-rangey, a little deadened as compared to with the pick because the, the flesh on your thumb doesn't have that same kind of attack. Now, when you come up, you are simulating the attack of a pick because of the hardness of your nail. So you can tell the difference between my downstrokes and my upstrokes. Sound different. So in some situations, you might want to go for that if you're maybe accenting the and, like a one and two and three and four and. Now if you notice, when I'm, even if I'm just playing like this, my wrist is still pretty uh, pretty much in place. I'm not all over the place like this, okay? Uh, the, the more wild you are, I think, again, just my opinion, I think the results will not be as good, won't sound as good if you just have a nice controlled part, even if you're using your fingers. Also too, if you're wild, sometimes you can really kind of like catch one of these strings and actually hit maybe some of the, the part on like the back of your finger or your thumb and just like cut your hand open, which is not cool at all, depending on how old your strings are too. You probably get diseases. It's probably a, a whole lot of reasons you don't wanna do that. But you wanna kinda keep whatever you're gonna use to strike the strings within this uh, area right here. You don't wanna come too far down, you don't wanna come too far up. Now, the first thing that you can do to even out the dynamics of how it sounds is to go down with the nail on your pointer finger and up nail on your thumb, all right? So we can kind of go. All right, now that sounds a little bit more even. Sometimes it can be a little trickier to kind of get that going really fast. But eventually you get good at it and you start aiming for different parts because you still wanna be able to maybe pick out the root note of a chord. Now, the way that I usually do this is if I'm going for a root note, maybe I'll start just by hitting that with the flesh of my thumb, so no nail, and then going to a downstroke with uh, the fingernail side of my pointer finger. So root chord. So the accents are gonna be the fingernail on my index finger. One, two, and three, and one, two, and three, and one, two, and three, and one. So the first accent, I guess, would just be the thumb plucking 
the, the root note. One, two, and three, and, and then the nail hitting the next group of three. I'm strumming in, uh, in three, four. One, two, and three, and nail. Two, and three, and one, two, and three, and... So it's almost like the, the non-nail or root note part of your strumming is almost just kind of keeping time for the more dynamic uh, fingernail hits to kind of stand out a little bit more, okay? And again, if you notice, my, my stroke is not exceeding really the string set, the, the width of the string set. Now, another thing that you can do is maybe instead of hitting that root note with your thumb like this, just kind of take a stab at it with your pointer finger as if it were a pick, okay? So now all my downstrokes that I really want to emphasize are gonna be with the nail side of my pointer finger. One, two, and three, and four, and five, and six, and Okay, so that to me is a good simulation of the attack of a pick just by using the nail of your index for the downstrokes and the nail of your thumb for the upstrokes. And again, I'm not getting all six strings all the time like this. There's a dynamic that goes in here. So maybe like one and two and three and four and five and six and. So for the first three count, I'm getting the low three strings. For the next three count, I'm getting the high three strings, or just a general approximation of them. You don't have to be perfect every time. I'm just kind of going back and forth between low and high. Low, high, low, high, low, high. You can do the same thing with maybe like the, the, the fleshy part of your thumb. So if you want to have that kind of accent, you can almost think of the nail or the flesh of your fingers being a volume control. Uh, just use the actual finger part of your finger for maybe a softer, deadened volume. And then if you really want to kind of emphasize part of a bar or part of a passage, or maybe even a whole part of the song, like maybe you could play a good example of that if you have a song that is only three chords and repeats and it has verses and choruses, but the verse and the chorus are the same chords. Like maybe if it's just A minor to C to G, something like that. Maybe for the verses, you can just play it just down and up with the, the flesh part of your fingers. And then the next time, maybe when the chorus is, you can add a little more excitement. And then really, when you, when you play like that, if you look at my hand, it almost looks like I'm holding a pick because it's really the exact kind of, the exact same kind of techniques that you would use if you used a pick. Like if you look at my wrist right there, it doesn't look a whole lot different than if I'm just using my nails. Okay, so if people could kind of see it, that maybe, maybe they just think you're using like a super, super small, extra tiny jazz three pick, when in which case they'll even respect you even more because you have that kind of control. So make it look like you're holding a pick and then just pretend you're playing with a pick and you'll get really good at getting those down strokes on the pointer fingernail and the up strokes on the thumb. But aside from that, you really do want to start incorporating more dynamics into your playing. And a lot of that is just kind of using your fingers almost as like a volume control because there's so many different ways that you can get different tones out of your instrument, whether it's an acoustic guitar, whether it's an electric guitar, any kind of instrument, there's so many different ways you can manipulate them just with your hands. So really losing picks is almost kind of like a blessing in disguise because it forces you to kind of do different things with your hands to try to get that sound and just try to get your instrument sounding good, okay? And even then you can still do a lot of mutes. Uh, another thing I'll do if I know I don't have a pick handy is I'll, I'll, I might incorporate mutes more to kind of add certain rhythmic components that might be harder to get with without a pick. So again, with that E major chord, just anchor your uh, the side of your hand near the bridge. And it's even one more type of volume control. And then with the flesh of your fingers and not the nails, 
Okay, that could be like the low volume, and then you could mute it with your nails. And then you can open it up with the flesh of your fingers. Again, it's bringing out more of the mid range. And then finally. All right, so a lot of different ways that you can kind of just get around, but it all comes down to tightening up the stroke of your wrist and then really assigning down and up strokes to be either down with your nail pointer finger or your thumb flash, up with your thumb or up with your pointer finger flash, thumbnail, and then being able to go back and forth with both of them. So again, I get it, it's tricky at first, especially if you've never done it, but you really kind of want to have good control of your thumb and your pointer finger because that stuff is only gonna help. Even if, even if you don't wanna do finger style stuff, the same kind of movements and familiarity that you'll get with your pointer finger uh, and your thumb are gonna come in really handy if you wanna do more finger style stuff in general. So again, it's really just kinda like body awareness, hand awareness. All this stuff makes a huge difference and it will really increase the ability of your musicianship and I think you'll be happy with how you can kind of manipulate this instrument and pretty much anything else with that kind of thoughtfulness. So if you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comment section, Instagram, Twitter, or the website. I'll talk to you all soon. Thanks a lot.